As we begin today's lesson, let me ask you a straightforward question. If you were to die today, what would your family and friends have to say about you? Now, I don't know about you, but that's kind of one of those shock questions that kind of stops me in my tracks. It's an attention getter. It's a wake-up call. If you were to die today, what would your family and friends have to say about you? That question cuts through all the unimportant, non-essential stuff and gets right to the heart of the matter. It deals with what others think about us. It reveals what those who know us best like or dislike about us. It addresses the respect or disrespect that our family and friends have for us. It speaks of our reputation. If you were to die today, what would your family and friends have to say about you? As we continue our sermon series from the book of Proverbs, Walking in Wisdom, we come today to a discussion of what the Bible says about reputation. And to get us started in today's study, let's follow along in your Bible as I read today's text. Proverbs 22, look at verse 1 with me. A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. Hear how some other versions translate or paraphrase this very same verse. The contemporary English, a good reputation and respect are worth more than silver or gold. The expanded Bible, being respected is more important than having great riches. To be well thought of is better than silver or gold. The message, a sterling reputation is better than striking it rich. A gracious spirit is better than money in the bank. Good news, if you have to choose between a good reputation and great wealth, choose a good reputation. The Passion Translation, a beautiful reputation is more to be desired than great riches, and to be esteemed by others uh, is more honorable than to own immense investments. Solomon put it this way in Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 1, a good reputation at the time of death is better than loving care at the time of birth. Simply put, how we exit this world when life ends is more important than how we enter this world when life begins. We have no control over what people think of us at birth, but we do have control over what people think of us at death. We may not be able to write our own birth announcement, but we spend our entire lives writing our own obituary and eulogy. Walking in wisdom, reputation. I almost changed this word reputation to character, and perhaps I should have done so. Why? Because I don't want us to fall into the ugly trap of thinking about image instead of character. Image is what we make people think we are. Character is what we really are. Image focuses on the external, whereas character focuses on on the internal. Image is something that can be changed almost overnight. Character is something that is developed over a lifetime. Image is what we are in public when people are watching. Character is what we are in private when only God is watching. All of which leads me to say this. Here's today's sermon in a sentence. Fill in the blanks there in your notes. The Bible says a good reputation is built on character, not image. A good reputation is built on character, not image. Why is that truth so important for us to understand? Well, look at what Solomon wrote here in Proverbs. Proverbs 10, verse 9. In fact, let's read this verse out loud together. Would you read it with me? The person with integrity walks securely, but the one who compromises will be found out. You understand what that verse is saying, don't you? Um, you know, if you have integrity, you don't have to worry. But if you're compromising in some way with your integrity, that 
character flaw is going to eventually be exposed. Those secrets that you're trying to hide will be found out eventually, and you're going to find yourself always looking over your shoulder because you're afraid that somebody's going to figure out who you really are. Proverbs 28, verse 1, puts it this way. Wicked people run away when no one chases them, but those who live right are as brave as lions. Proverbs 29, verse 6. An evil person is snared by their own sin, but a righteous one can sing and be glad. I love that verse because it, I, I picture the righteous person just singing and humming their way through life. You know, there's joy in living with integrity. Again, the Bible says a good reputation is built on character and not image. When we build a good, solid reputation based upon the integrity of our character, then we are secure. There is nothing to fear. There's nothing to cover up. Nothing we have to worry that somebody's going to dig up about us. We don't have to worry about that. So back to our question. If you were to die today, what would your family and friends have to say about you? Or Perhaps I think maybe even a better question here might be, if you were to die today, what would God have to say about you? Well, Solomon offers some practical wisdom in Proverbs for building a good reputation. Four areas of character building that I think we need to address in our lives. Let's talk about those together. First, we must speak with credibility. We must speak with credibility. Notice God's wisdom through Solomon on this matter. Proverbs 11, verse 6, honest lips can keep you safe, but if you can't be trusted in what you say, then you trap yourself. Proverbs 12, verse 17, an honest person speaks the truth at all times. Proverbs 17, verse 17, respected people do not tell Lies. I mean, it's pretty simple. If we want to build a good, solid reputation with others, then we must speak with credibility. Tell the truth. Be trustworthy. Demonstrate integrity in all that we say. Now, addressing credibility in our speech, Proverbs 25 and verse 14 reminds us, broken promises are worse than rain clouds that don't bring rain. There's a word picture for you. And yet, how often we make promises that, quite frankly, we never intend to keep. See if you recognize any of these. I'll get on that right away. I'll pray for you. I'll be sure to return this just as soon as I'm done with it. Yeah. I'll pay back when I get my next paycheck. I'll spend some time with you this weekend, son. I'll call you right back. <laughs> I'm going to begin my new diet and exercise program tomorrow morning. Uh-huh. <laughs> I love David's prayer of commitment in Psalm 17, verse 3. In fact, I think it should be our prayer as well. So let's read it out loud together. Would you read this with me? Though you probe my heart and examine me, though you test me, you will find nothing. I have resolved that my mouth will not sin. I, I love that commitment. I have resolved that my mouth will not sin. That needs to be our commitment as well, that every word that we utter would be truthful and trustworthy, that we would demonstrate uh, integrity in everything we say. So how do we build a good, solid reputation? First, we must speak with credibility. Second, we must serve with exceptionality. We must serve with exceptionality. Notice the wisdom of these Proverbs. Proverbs 3, verses 3 and 4. Do not let kindness leave you, so you will find favor and good repute in the sight of God and man. Proverbs 11, verse 27. Try hard to do good, and you will win friends. Proverbs 14, verse 22, you will earn the trust and respect of others if you work hard for their good. 
The point is this, if we want to build a good reputation with others, then serve with exceptionality. Have a servant's heart. Be other people-centered. Put the needs and the interest of others before our own. Paul put it this way, Philippians 2, verses 3 and 4, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of others. And then in the verses that follow, Paul actually holds up the example of Jesus who made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. What was Paul's point in all of that? Well, verse 6 is what his point was. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Simply put, as Jesus was and is to us, a humble, other-centered servant, so we are to be to others. Our service, like Christ, is to be exceptional. The problem is we live in a serve-us society, not a service society. And the prevailing mindset is, what can I get? What is in it for me rather than what can I give? What is in it for others? Jesus may have made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, but that's not our mindset. That servant attitude is just about the furthest thing from most people's minds. And yet look at what Jesus himself said in Mark 10, verses 43 through 45. Whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant. Whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus' exceptional servant's heart is to be our exceptional servant's heart as well. Would you, your, your family and your friends, Describe your service to God and to others as exceptional. One of my favorite Old Testament Bible characters, Daniel, he actually built that reputation for himself. Even though he was only a young slave boy, a Jewish slave boy in captivity in Babylon, Daniel 6 and verse 3 tells us, Then Daniel began distinguishing himself because of his exceptional service. And so the king planned to appoint him over the whole kingdom. And we all know the rest of the story, of course, his interpretation of dreams, his survival of the lion's den, his many prophetic visions, his widespread influence throughout that pagan kingdom in spite of who he was with no position really at all. I mean, there's a whole book in the Old Testament that celebrates Daniel's exceptional service. So, how do we build a good, solid reputation? Second, we must serve with exceptionality. Third, we must share with generosity. We must share with generosity. I love the way Solomon uh, stated this in Proverbs 11 and verse 25. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. The psalmist put it this way, Psalm 112, verse 9. The person who gives generously and shows kindness will be powerful and respected. The principle here is simply this. If we want to build a good reputation with others, share with generosity. Give willingly. Sacrifice joyfully. Donate liberally. Andrew Carnegie. You recognize that name? Most of you are nodding, yeah. When Carnegie died, a slip of paper was found in his desk drawer, which had this life goal written on it from when he was 20 years old. He wrote, I want to spend the first half of my life making money and the last half of my life giving it away. And that's what he did, literally, to the tune of $450 million. And that's why he has a lasting reputation even 
today. But let me tell you the story of nine others who were Carnegie's contemporaries some 100 years ago. These nine men were the wealthiest tycoons on the face of the earth, and they met in Chicago back in 1923. Among them, they controlled more money than what was actually in the U.S. Treasury at that time. So what happened to them? Well, let me tell you. Charles Schwab lived the last five years of his life on borrowed money, and he died penniless. Arthur Cutton, the world's greatest stock speculator, died overseas bankrupt. Richard Whitney, president of the New York Stock Exchange, spent the last years of his life in Sing Sing prison. Albert Fall, member of the president's cabinet, had to be pardoned from prison so that he could die with dignity at home. Samuel Insull, president of the largest utility company in the world, died as a fugitive on the run. Howard Hobson, president of the largest petroleum company in the world, died in an insane asylum. Jesse Livermore, known as the Great Bear of Wall Street, committed suicide. Ivor Kruger, founder of the largest securities company in the world, committed suicide. Leon Fraser, president of the Bank of International Settlements, also committed suicide. All nine of these men knew how to make a living, but they just didn't know how to live. And with the exception of Charles Schwab, you probably didn't recognize a single name on that list I just read. And yet, 100 years ago, they controlled most of this world's resources. Here's the point. People are never honored for what they get. They are honored for what they give. People are never honored for what they get. They are honored for what they give. Jesus himself told us to do something with our money, that's actually pretty incredible in Luke 16 and verse 9. In fact, let's read this verse out loud together. Would you read it with me? And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of worldly wealth, so that when it fails, they may welcome you into eternal dwellings. Now, that's one of those verses that you have to read a couple, three times and kind of think about a bit. But I think the voice actually paraphrases that same verse and makes it come to light much quicker it says this, realize that the purpose of money is to strengthen friendships, to provide opportunities for being generous and kind. Eventually, money will be useless to you, but if you use it generously to influence others for Christ here on earth, you will be welcomed joyfully by those you influence when you get to heaven. Make a little more sense that way? You see, the resources that God has entrusted to us are simply tools. He has given them to us so that we can use them to influence others for the kingdom of God, so that we can bring others to Christ, so that one day when we get to heaven, there's going to be a bunch of people up there in heaven rejoicing with us who are there because we were able to influence them through our generosity. That should make you stop and think. How do you build a good, solid reputation? Third, we must share with generosity. Fourth, we must succeed with humility. We must succeed with humility. Take note of God's wisdom to us in these Proverbs. Proverbs 11, verse 2. Too much pride can put you to shame. It's wiser to be humble. That kind of just says it, doesn't it? Proverbs 29, verse 23. Arrogance will bring your downfall, but if you are humble you will be respected. The lesson to be applied here is this. If we want to build a good reputation with others, then succeed with humility. Don't let our successes go to our heads. Keep a sane perspective about yourself. Avoid an inflated opinion of our own importance. Okay, it's quiz time. How many of you believe that success can ruin people. Let me see your hands. Okay. Put your hand down. Now, how many of you believe that success will ruin you? Where'd all the hands go? 
Isn't that interesting? Oh, not me. I, I could handle it. I'd like a little bit of that, God. Yeah, give me some of that success. Well, you think so? Let's read Proverbs 27, verse 21 out loud together. Gold and silver are tested in a red-hot furnace, but we are tested by praise. Oh, isn't that interesting? See, it is not adversity, but rather it is prosperity that actually tests us. Now, don't misunderstand me. Yes, we are tested by uh, difficult things that happen in our life. When we go through those tough times, when we go through those really hard times, that is a test of our character. I will admit, you will admit, because you've been there, you've done that. You know those times are tough and that it really tests your faith and that it tests your character. But I'm going to tell you today, that is nothing like the test of prosperity. If you want to know what somebody is really made of, let them fall into a pit of richness. Let them stumble upon gold and silver. Let them, let them suddenly become prosperous. Let them get that promotion. Let them climb to the top of the ladder. Let them suddenly come into you know, some kind of winnings in the lottery and just watch how they fail the test. Oh, it wouldn't happen to me. Yeah? Remember the parable of the rich fool? Jesus told the story of this man who had an abundant harvest, a bumper crop, if you will. He kind of stumbled into it all. And Now, there was nothing inherently wrong at all with his success, but there was something wrong with his response to his success. Jesus put it this way in the parable. He said, then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barn. Next slide, please. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and then I'll store my surplus grain, and I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. See, this, this man had an eye problem. He did. In fact, look at those verses again with me, and you'll see exactly what I meant. Then he said, next slide. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns, and I will build bigger ones, and there I will store my surplus grain, and I'll say to myself, you have plenty yeah, of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. Eight times... In two verses, he refers to himself. I, 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 me, 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 my, my, my. He let his success go to his head. And his downfall is found in the next two words in the parable. But God. Oops. Yeah. In his little self-talk, did you notice he never once mentioned God? But God. And you know the rest of the story. He died that night and all of his successes died with him, as is true with each and every one of us. You can't take it with you. So, how do we build a good, solid reputation? Fourth, we must succeed with humility. In review then, Solomon offers some practical wisdom in Proverbs for building a good, solid reputation. Four areas of character building that we need to address in our lives. We must speak with credibility. We must serve with exceptionality. We must share with generosity. And we must succeed with humility. Walking in wisdom. Today's sixth lesson, we have looked at Solomon's wisdom about reputation. And we began today's sermon by asking a rather probing question. If you were to die today, what would your family and friends have to say about you? Or perhaps, again, the better question is, if you were to die today, what would God have to say about you? As we further ponder those probing questions, let's watch this Francis Chan video clip together. Reputation. If I were to because I don't know many of you at all, but let's say I just started interviewing you, 
Maybe I'd interview the people closest to you, you know, your, your friends who are here with you today. And I ask them, tell me about David, you know, if, if there's a David out there. Tell me, tell me about David or whatever your name is. And I, and I asked your wife, David, I asked your kids, I asked your friends, I asked people who worked about you. Tell me about his relationship with God. Tell me what he's like. Tell me about, you know, who, who is this guy? Okay, think about that. If I interviewed the people close to you, what would they say? If I interviewed people in this church about you, what would they tell me? Okay, think about that. Some of the people in this church might say some very nice things about you, right? People in your Sunday school, people that have been on missions trips with you, people that that were at the dinner table with you. Think about what they would tell me about you. What would they say? What's your reputation? And maybe Pastor John knows you, and I would ask Pastor John, well, tell, me what, tell me about this guy, what you know about him. Tell me about this woman, what you know about her. Think about the report I would get by interviewing those people. Okay, you got it got in your mind? We have an idea of what they would say. Okay, now what if, what if God would allow me right now to just leave this earth and come before his throne? And I could actually interview him and ask him about you. Father, tell me, tell me about, t- tell me about David. What, what are your thoughts about him, his actions, his life, his, his love for you? And I just kind of took down a report. What would the two reports look like? Would this one report, would what your friends and your family and the people around say about you be much higher than what God would say? And if so, could it be that you've been more consumed about your reputation than you are about your character and who you really are before God? And you maybe purposefully, we can do this, right? Make ourselves sound better than we are to certain people and create a reputation for ourselves that may indeed be false when we stand before God. And we know it, and we know it, what God would say about us in many ways, and sure, sometimes we even deceive ourselves on that, but for the most part we know, right? And that's what he says to these people, and, and that the, the verse is very dear to me because I now have a reputation. And I want my life to match up. I don't want, at the end, God to say, wow, that's good, ooh, Mr. Crazy Love, you, you know? <laughs> but for Jesus to confess my name and say, no, Francis, he, he, he loved me. He loved me. Father, angels, Here's Francis. He loved me. He he didn't go these other directions. He lived it out. (laughs) Isn't that what you would love to hear from the voice of Jesus? That's what we're after. And and so if it comes across me just going, wow, this guy doesn't even know me. He's getting in my face already. It's because I I want that for you. What a silliness. There's such a silliness to fake when something so big is on the line. Something so grand is on the line. I, I sometimes just tell people, like, why would you fake? Think of it. Take it to the end. You, you know, take it to the very end. You fooled everyone. That's great. And so you die and you go to hell and you think, yeah, but everyone thinks I'm in heaven. <laughs> That's your goal? How long is that joy going to last? You guys, it's this, it's, 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 it's this time to get real. It's, it's just a time for us. We've got to get honest with some of our disbelief. Uh, be honest with our fear of surrender. To be honest with some of the concern we have of the incongruency of what we see in New Testament, Testament Christianity and what we see in our own lives. Would you pray with Oh, God, um, forgive me, forgive us for faking it at times, 
for being more concerned about what others think we're like, that we put up an image that isn't real. When our reputations are really based not on the external stuff, but what's happening inside, our character. Let us be more concerned about who we are than what we fake other people into thinking we are. Let us be real. Let us have integrity. Let us be authentic, genuine. Let the real person be the person everyone sees. But most of all, we know that you see that real person all the time. We never fake out you. (laughs) Thank you for reminding us of that today through this important lesson about reputation and character. And ultimately, God, we're going to stand before you. It's not so much what others say about us. It's what you're going to say about us. Because ultimately on that day, we will stand in your presence. We will stand before you. And the words we so long and delight to hear are, well done, good and faithful servant. May it be so in our lives, I pray. In Jesus' name.